Let's now take a look at network security. Network security are the steps that we take in order to protect a network, a computer network. And this doesn't have to be a network connected to the internet. This could be a home network. This could be a network at the office. We're looking at ways to protect the computer network kind of locally. And we're gonna take a look at permissions, user policies, and wireless security. The first thing we have to realize about network security is that the biggest threat that we have in network security are the users. We're not talking about the bad users, the ones who aren't supposed to, we're talking about just general users. These are the folks who typically cause the most problems on a computer network. Most of the time, it just comes from ignorance. You didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. Oh, whoops, I didn't know that was for that. So understanding that users are the biggest threat in a computer network, you'll understand why most of the ways to protect a network are directed at controlling the users. The first one deals with permissions. Now, nobody likes being told no. My kids don't like being told no. Um, I don't like my wife telling me no. So permissions, nobody likes being told no, but yet in a network, we need to tell users, no, you can't do this. No, you can't access this. So permissions allow users to access data they're supposed to in order to get their work done, as well as deny access to data and programs that you don't need to use. Permissions are built into any networking operating system. In fact, if you learn about networking as far as more the geeky level, Network Plus, Microsoft, Cisco, you learn about the permissions and assigning permissions and giving groups permissions and all this stuff. Permissions are a key fundamental fit core of controlling a network and it's part of any network operating system. So we have to, again, give the right permissions to the right people. This can go good or bad. If you take away too many permissions, you can really interfere with workflow. If you give too many permissions, then you can cause problems. There is a funny song out there. It's called the Systems Administration Song. I have a link in the description. It's worth checking out. Very cute, very funny. The next one are user policies, acceptable user policies, network uses policies, et cetera, et cetera. These are rules that are created by an organization regarding the use of not only their computers, but most cases the network as well as any other technology that you have at the office. It's going to typically specify the websites that you can go to, the websites that you can't go to, not, you know, you can go here, here, and here, but the general genres, the themes, categories of websites that you aren't supposed to go to. Uh, for example, if you do a search, in fact, as a recording of this video, the U.S. federal government, apparently there was an EPA employee who spent about six hours a day taking federal money, money out of our pockets, to surf porn. That would definitely be something against user policies. You're not supposed to do that at work. So you're not going to gambling sites. You're not going to adult sites. Um, it also kind of affects sometimes social media, what you can and can't do in social media. So for example, if you work for a school district, they might have blocked uh, Facebook or Twitter or other social media. It also again affects what you can do with technology, even from your phone. By the way, for everybody else but the federal government, breaking user policies is usually the fastest way to get fired. When you sign those user policies, be sure to read them and see what you can and can't do. The user policies are not for you. I don't know if you're aware of that, but user policies are never for the users. User policies are there to protect the organization. And so one of the fastest ways, like I said, to get canned, fired, is to break those policies. A theme or a side note that goes into this as well is something called expectation of privacy. Expectation is a, a very uh, important concept. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving legal advice. I am giving a general thing here, a general concept here. When you're at home and let's say that you are in the shower, you have an expectation of privacy. If you're in a hotel and you're in the shower, you have an expectation of privacy. You have the expectation that nobody's watching you. And so if somebody has hidden a camera in the bathroom to watch you, they are breaking that expectation of privacy. And it's most likely illegal depending on the laws and when they were written, et cetera, et cetera. All of this to make this point. 
when you're at work and you're on their technology, on their computer, on their phone, on their fax machine, you have no expectation of privacy. This has been fought in back courts before, and it's always wound up usually going on the side of the organization, meaning they can and will monitor your emails. They can and will monitor your web surfing habits. They can and maybe monitor your phone calls. You have no expectation of privacy at work. Keep in mind, this also means when you go home, if you're using company technology. So if the company gives you a laptop, it's the company's laptop. It doesn't matter if you're at home, still the company's laptop. If they give you the phone, still the company's phone. So expectation of privacy, you don't have it when you're using work material. So here are some general rules of technology at work. Try to keep you out of trouble. One, expect everything you do on technology to be monitored. We've already covered that. Two, don't install software on your computer unless you're told specifically by the right person. So even if it's a great program and you're at work and let's say, for example, you have to do graphic media and you want to use Photoshop and they've got this other program that you hate, you just can't install Photoshop. You have to make sure that it's okay. You have to go through the proper channels, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes this can be a pain in the neck. For example, when I was with the federal government, it took three months to get a copy of an outdated version of Photoshop. I got the disk. Three months to get the disk. Another two months to have somebody come out and try to install the disk, only to find out they couldn't install the disk. They had to do something else. So installation of software can be a pain. Three, kind of goes without saying, don't go to inappropriate websites. Your company should give you guidelines on you shouldn't go here, you shouldn't go there. Don't go there. Believe me, it doesn't matter how smooth you think you are. Your traffic, your network requests are going to a central router. That information is automatically logged. And so anywhere you go on a work computer is documented. Time, computer, log on information, yes, they're watching you. And finally, in general, do not use computer technology for personal use. When in doubt, don't do it. Don't use company technology for your personal use. It's the easiest way to stay out of trouble. Finally, wireless security. We covered this in greater detail, specifically in video five, number three, in the wireless section. Three key things to keep in mind when it comes to wireless security. One, change your administrative name and password. Two, change your SSID and turn off broadcasting. And three, don't use WEP, don't use WEP, use WPA2. Okay, our next video, we're going to start taking a look at internet security. By the way, you got to love these graphics. 